When you think of the fastest growing economies in the world, you might think of a country like China, because they have been growing at a high rate of roughly 6 to 7 percent per year for the past several years, and have become an economic superpower. But China is actually not even in the top 20 fastest growing economies on Earth. In fact, when you take a look at the top 50 fastest growing economies on the planet, roughly 38 percent of them come from one single continent, a continent that is quickly becoming the economic battleground of the world. This is Africa. In 2002, the GDP per capita of Sub-Saharan Africa was a paltry $588. Yet, by 2019, the GDP per capita had grown to well over $1,600. That is a 272% increase in the wealth of an entire continent in less than two decades. This massive increase in wealth brought many of Africa's countries like Nigeria, Botswana, and Ghana out of relative poverty and into the middle income class of the world. But this brings up a question. What has brought Africa's economy out of poverty? Or maybe a more important question is who has brought Africa's economy out of poverty? You see, Africa has been the most underdeveloped continent over the last several centuries, as it has historically had a poor infrastructure that has drastically limited its economic development. For example, the United States has a surface area of 9.8 million kilometers squared, and the continent of Africa has a surface area roughly three times that, at about 30.4 million kilometers squared. Yet, the United States has over 108,000 kilometers of highways constructed within the country, and Africa has a little over half of that at 60,000 kilometers of highways constructed over the entire continent. In fact, to this day, there are still no paved highways that travel through anywhere in Central Africa. And the transportation network has been just one of a litany of infrastructure flaws in Africa. For example, the continent has also historically had problems with electricity availability, internet access, and water shortages as well. But things started to change just a couple decades ago. You see, as China began transforming itself from a poor farming nation in the 1970s to an economic powerhouse, it slowly started gaining large amounts of influence in Africa. It did this by increasing increasing foreign aid and trade to many African countries, and by investing billions of dollars per year in African infrastructure projects. For example, Africa's main railways in Kenya, Ethiopia, Angola, Djibouti, and Nigeria have all been funded by China. And China has also funded other projects like the African Union Headquarters, the West African Bloc Headquarters, several major power plants, oil refineries, hydropower plants, Zimbabwe's new parliament building, and a private Chinese developer is funding the development of an entire city in Egypt. But that brings up the question, why is China investing so much money into Africa? Well, there are a few key reasons, one of which is that China has now become Africa's largest trading partner, trading nearly $128 billion worth of goods every year. Meanwhile, a country like the United States only trades roughly $48 billion worth of goods with Africa every year. What this means is that Africa has resources that China wants. For example, about one third of all oil used in China comes from Africa. Another reason why China has pumped so much money into Africa is because return on African investments has been fairly good. From 2006 to 2011, the average return on African investments investments from China was a hefty 11% per year. In fact, roughly 15% of all African external debt is owned by the Chinese government, and two-thirds of all loans given to African nations in the past three years have come from China. China has also begun shifting a lot of its labor industries to other countries that have cheaper labor. And the continent with the cheapest labor in the world right now is Africa. That is why many Chinese manufacturers have shifted their entire base to countries in Africa such as Ethiopia. It is estimated that roughly 12% of Africa's manufacturing production today is being run by Chinese companies. And of course, there is also a case for political influence. Even though most Chinese investments into Africa are now coming from private Chinese investors, that does not mean that the Chinese government isn't playing a massive role in a lot of these African investments. In 2018, China announced that it would put together a $60 billion financing and investment plan 
plan solely for Africa over the next decade. And on the world stage, we have seen some of China's influence in Africa play a role in making key decisions. For example, the United Nations were voting whether or not to condemn the human rights violations that were occurring in North Korea in 2007. Now, North Korea and China are fairly close allies, so China voted not to condemn North Korea. And even though virtually all of Europe, North America, South America, and Australia voted to condemn the actions of North Korea, most countries in Africa either chose to side with China or chose not to vote at all. And that is just one example. If you were to look at any of the UN special session votes in recent history, like the voting on the status of Jerusalem, the protection of Palestine, or even non-special sessions like the voting on the human rights violations in Myanmar, Ukraine, Iran, and Syria, you will see a large portion of the African continent choosing not to go against China's vote. Now, I am not saying that China is buying votes at the UN, but at the very least, it is a sign that China has probably influenced the voting pattern of many African nations. And this doesn't just apply to China. I mean, the same could very well be said for the United States' influence on many Western countries. So anyways, China has been investing tons of money into Africa's infrastructure, which has drastically helped out many African cities whether you agree with the purpose or not. But there is another player which has arguably played a bigger role in Africa's modernization, especially over the last 10 years. And it is not a government or a nation like China. It is actually big tech. You see, even though some nations might view Africa as a chance to gain an ally or political influence, many big tech companies have viewed Africa as the next giant consumer market. And these companies know that if you can be the first big player in a market with over 1.3 billion people, then that could potentially turn into hundreds of billions of dollars down the line. And one of the first companies to recognize this was the South Korean company, Samsung. In 2012, only about 6% of people in Africa had smartphones, and Samsung only had about 10% of the market share at the time. But after doubling their African investment and making stripped down versions of their Galaxy smartphones, they soon became the most valuable phone company on the continent. And recently, we have seen many other smartphone companies follow suit, with the likes of Apple, Huawei, Nokia, and other smartphone companies, as they have begun investing larger sums of capital in order to try and grow their share of the smartphone market in Africa. But here's the thing. Even though Samsung is the winner of the smartphone market in Africa for now, the true winner of this race is Huawei. You see, as part of China's plan to build up the infrastructure of Africa, they also ended up building over 70% of Africa's 4G and 5G networks. Meaning that at the end of the day, Huawei may not be the king of the smartphone market, but they are the undisputed champion of the telecom industry. Now, remember earlier how I mentioned that China was planning to invest $60 billion into Africa over the next decade? Well, that number might soon be dwarfed by a few companies from Seattle and Silicon Valley. For example, Amazon is taking its first step into the African market by building a $100 million data center in Cape Town this year. And even though Amazon has yet to open a warehouse in Africa, it is still a sign that Amazon is realizing there is a growing market demand in Africa. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter and the online banking platform Square, tweeted out his interest in the continent by saying, Africa will define the future. And he is not wrong. The technology market in Africa is the fastest growing tech market in the world. Just a decade ago, there was virtually no startup tech investing going on within the continent, but this year there is projected to be well over $2 billion worth of investments into startups. And one of the biggest American investors in Africa is Facebook. Not only has Facebook opened up multiple startup incubators in Africa, but they are also trying to compete with the Chinese tech giant Huawei in order to gain some market market share in Africa's telecom industry. Facebook announced a plan called Project Simba, where it is trying to build giant data cables around most of Africa in order to become the main supplier of the continent's internet. And this would be a multi-billion dollar investment from the social media company, which would just add on to the company's growing African telecom infrastructure. For example, Facebook has already laid down more than 770 kilometers of data cables in Uganda 
China, and over 750 kilometers of data cables in Nigeria. So it is already proven that it wants to be a serious player in the African telecom space. But arguably the biggest investor in the African tech economy is none other than Google. You see, Google might be the biggest private investor in global infrastructure in the world, as it has invested on average about $17 billion per year just on infrastructure projects for the past five years. And one of its biggest undertakings has been a project called Google Aquino. This project is an advanced cable network that will run all the way from Portugal down to South Africa. And these are just a few examples of some big players making big investments into Africa. But there are also a ton of other notable companies getting into the African economy, such as Microsoft, Netflix, IBM, Cisco, and Uber, who are all investing billions of dollars per year combined into the African economy as well. All in all, what we have seen over the past decade is an influx of investment from both American companies and Chinese companies, along with an increase in trade and investments from some national governments, most notably China. All of this has created an economic battleground that is seeing which companies and governments can build up Africa's infrastructure the fastest and dominate the emerging market before its competitors can. And because of these investments, we have seen some rapid modernization of Africa's infrastructure. For example, in the year 2000, only 26% of Africa had access to electricity. The life expectancy was on average about 50 years. Only 71% of kids went to school and only 1% of the population had access to the internet. Meanwhile, today, Roughly 45% of the population has access to electricity. The life expectancy has increased to 60 years old. Nearly 97% of kids are now going to school. And 40% of the continent now has access to the internet. So things are improving in Africa. But what might be the biggest factor for Africa's economy going into the future might be Africa itself. In 2012, an African e-commerce startup named Jumia launched in five African countries. It marketed itself as the Amazon of Africa, and over the next several years, the yearly revenue of Jumia reached over $234 million. The company continued to expand over the next few years before becoming the first African tech company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It eventually reached a valuation of several billion dollars before having some financial and legal troubles, which saw its stock price drop fairly sharply over the past couple years. But other homegrown African companies have stepped up to the plate in the last decade to become near billion dollar companies. Some examples are CellC, Promacador, Interswitch, Opay, and Pompeii. So what should you take from all of this? Well, what we are witnessing before our very eyes is a rapid development of an entire continent. Now, even though it is still a continent with political instability and a relatively poor infrastructure, things seem to be improving quite fast. And one of the most positive signs is that on March 18th, 2018, 54 of Africa's 55 countries signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which was created with the purpose to make a single market while deepening the economic integration of the entire continent. It is projected that this trade agreement could single-handedly increase trade within Africa by up to 52%. But this is just one step. Africa will still need to do a lot more in the near future if it wants to become a modernized economy. And even though it may lag behind the rest of the developed world for the next little while, it wouldn't be too surprising if we start to see some African countries become powerful economic players on the world stage within the next few decades. So what do you think will happen with the economy of Africa going into the future? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me in the near future. I also have an entire documentaries playlist with videos just like this. So make sure to click on that playlist and I will see you guys in my next video in just a few seconds.